Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I have a sew the look for you. So it has been a while since I have done a sew the look. Um, there were a whole bunch of summer outfits I was trying to get through and actually there's a couple <laughs> that I didn't ever got a chance to do. Um, I'm trying to think, I think maybe just two, maybe three. I can't remember. There were a few of the eight that I did not get finished. Um, the fabric I still have sitting, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll just push that until the spring. Uh, one of them would have been a great fall dress, but you know, we'll just wait and maybe push that to the spring. Um, with my colors being autumn colors, you know, I can still wear those in the spring and it'll work just as well. Uh, anyway, I have moved on to winter because that is the season that we are heading fast approaching, um, especially here in Indiana. Uh, so on, let's see, Friday, last Friday, um, I'm not really sure when you're going to be watching this video because I also have a pattern release and I'm not sure when that one's going to be coming out. So I'm not really sure when you're watching this, but a while, a little, just a few videos ago, I did a roundup of um, eight, I think, I think it was eight, um, street style looks and patterns to recreate them. So um, I'm going to be doing, I think, some more so the looks that are not included um, from that video, but I would like to make up a few of these um, as well. I think that's just uh, a lot of fun and it's something I really enjoy researching and then executing. I think that's just, it's just a lot of fun. So uh, let's get started and dig in. So I have two um, garments or two pieces um, here today that have made the whole full look. I have recently made both of them. Both of them are um, fabric from Minerva. Um, so these will both be featured over on their site as well, their new website, which is very exciting. You can go check that out and follow me over there if you aren't already. I'll leave a link down to um, my profile down below. I'll just start putting that probably down in my um, just all of the information that's at the bottom of, um, in the description box of all my videos. Um, but anyway, I uh, had highlighted this outfit. So this is the inspiration outfit that we're going off of from Netta Porte. Um, and I'm not even sure, I'm sure that the shirt and the pants are some ridiculous um, price, because <laughs> that's typically. Netta Porte, if you're not familiar with it, it is a website of designer um, items. So I mean, it's like no big deal that there'll be a pair of like $3,000 pants or something like that, um, which I just find so funny and, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just a whole nother group of people out there that just live completely differently than I do. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But anyway, I do like searching on their site. And um, what drew me to this one was number one, I love the monochromatic. There's a few things that drew me to this. I love the monochromatic. I talked about this a little bit on the last video. I love the unexpected color of the monochromatic because, um, you know, it's orange, which is one of the colors that I can wear. And I've been wearing, making a lot of stuff in orange. I'm actually wearing an orange sweater I knitted um, only because it was a color I thought I never could wear. Um, I was told all my life that I should be wearing pastels and that I couldn't wear oranges and mustards, which actually are my colors. Um, anyway, so when I got all of that back from having my colors done, I've just been going hog wild on wearing um, the mustards that I can wear and the oranges because I can wear a lot of oranges. Um, mustard, it's a little more, um, I can't wear as many yellows, but there's a category of like mustards that I can wear and that are, are great. There's a lot of shades of variations of orange that I can wear. Um, but anyway, um, so I've really just been going hog wild. So when I saw this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to do an orange monochromatic look because why not? I am only 5'2", so anytime you dress monochromatically in a column of color, no matter the color, it's going to make you look taller. So um, that's always fun uh, when you are vertically challenged like I am. Number two, I've also really been enjoying exploring other um, leg styles uh, with pants. So, um, you know, we've all been wearing the skinny jeans for however long now, 15 years, 20 years, 20s, has it been that long? Definitely probably 15. I can remember wearing them right before I had my kids and like right after I had my kids, so maybe like 15 years um, that the skinny jeans have come in. I think they're definitely a closet staple, something that's going to be around forever, definitely a classic piece of clothing. But I've really been enjoying, especially lately, trying a few of the other different leg styles, a little bit wider, a little bit more relaxed, um, just as something kind of fun. Now, Raven Marine on Instagram um, did posted a picture of, um, I believe it was a Mimi G pattern um, for simplicity, but uh, a picture of her in a kind of a cropped or a shorter top and then these 
exaggerated flared pants and I loved it. I just absolutely loved it. I commented on it. Um, her legs looked so long. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so good. I, I just love the, the nod to the 70s, so much about it. Um, so I'm like, I wanna recreate something like that. So I actually had two different orange fabrics that I had been gifted by Minerva. So both of these fabrics were in exchange for um, a post on their site. So I am, they, and gifted, I get to pick, but I am gifted fabric from them in exchange for, I'm part of their ma maker team. So in exchange for um, a blog post technically, but really it's on their new social media site. So it's like a really long, almost like Instagram post really. Um, with the pictures and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little different than the blog that it used to be. Um, but in exchange for that, I get gifted fabric. And so I had two different fabrics that were both oranges that really kind of, um, they're sitting here next to me, that really kind of go well together. Um, they're not a match, but they're close. These are the two fabrics here together. Obviously the top is a brighter orange and the bottoms are more of a burnt orange. And uh, the bottoms, I had chosen this um, Robert Kaufman Big Sur canvas um, in the burnt orange colorway. So when I originally got it, I kind of thought I wanted to do a jacket with it. Um, I had three meters of it, and um, I think I had three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, three. These pants took almost all three because <laughs> I, I have very little left because uh, the the um, leg is so exaggerated. The flare is so exaggerated on these, and I love them so much. So um, I'm going to show you each piece separately, and then I'll do the full look at the end. So we'll start with the paint. We'll start with the top. So for the top... I had this cotton jersey and I got it in the orange um, and I I got this shortly after I'd had, um, well not shortly after, but a little bit um, after I had um, gotten my colors done at the beginning of the year. So I was just starting to explore orange a little bit more and so I got this cotton spandex. You guys know I love cotton spandex for my t-shirts with the thought of doing a t-shirt. Although then I did all of the t-shirt week um, back in March and um, I, mean, I just have enough t-shirts. I have uh, plenty of t-shirts. So then I'm like, well, what is something different that I could do with the cotton spandex that's still kind of a t-shirt but not like your typical t-shirt? And I was looking through my patterns and came across this um, B6235. I think that's right. I think that's right. Maybe it's four or five. I can't remember. This pattern, this, <laughs> this gritty pattern right here, um, Butterick. And I had it in my stash and I was going through and looking. I was like, oh my gosh, that would be, and it's for, it's for stable knits. Now this is a cotton spandex. So maybe a little bit stretchier than what the pattern calls for, but it still works because a cotton, even with spandex, is um, it holds its shape really well, which is what you need for this pattern. So um, I'm like, I'm gonna try making that one. So it, this isn't gonna look very good, not on a body because it's a wrap top. Those are so hard to like show off. So anyway, this is a very interesting pattern. So the front and the back is all one piece. So there's no shoulder seam there. So basically the front and the back get sewn together at the back in the center back seam right here. There's darts on either side. And then you finish off and then that, it, so it creates kind of a V at the back and then um, everything gets finished like hemmed basically for the whole front of the top. So there's no lengthen and shorten lines. I made it right as is, the size 14, which is what I typically make in um, the commercial big four patterns. And um, it's short, it is definitely short. I think maybe, there's no, again, no lengthen and shorten lines, but maybe I could have flanagled something um, for future patterns. I mean, when I wear high-waisted pants with this, so when I, I have these on with the orange pants that are more high-waisted than the Dawn jeans that I'm wearing them with here, um, I, it's more, I mean, I'm more comfortable because it definitely um, goes past that waistband. It almost meets the waistband of these Dawn jeans. Um, and the orange pants are tighter around the waist. So the Dawn jeans, um, I think I need to retry that pattern again. I think I made a size 10 and graded to a 14 at the waist, if I recall, with this pair of Dawn jeans. And um, I've lost some weight with taking sugar. I had to take sugar out of my diet for health reasons. And um, I can um, go with a smaller waistband because my waist is not nearly as swollen. That's my issue. My waist swells, my stomach swells. And so um, everything comes out and so that's where things can cut into my waist um, but taking sugar out I'm not as inflamed hardly at all 
So anyway, um, that could also be part of the problem. But I love this top. I just think it is so fun and so different. It gathers into these gigantic ties. So the gigantic, really thick ties do help because you can wrap them around your waist and they kind of give you a little bit more length. You just kind of have to tuck, especially the back, I notice. I really have to kind of tuck things in and get them situated. But because of the nature of cotton spandex, everything does kind of hold its, um, hold its place really well. Now this pattern also calls you for using um, self fabric to line it. So I got away with using 1.5 meters of this um, for this pattern and it calls for like, I like two and a half I think, because I didn't line it. Um, I think that would have been really thick to be honest. But that's how she finishes off the neck edge and the um, hem, but I just cover stitched. I cover stitched my hem, it was not hard to not line, you know, to finish it without lining it. Um, I attached my ties, I surged them, um, and then I just kind of stitched them into place with the top stitching on the top and the bottom here at the, and it, yeah, everything, all my seams are lying like really nice. Uh, and then I finished off the um, neck edge with my, um, some knit stay tape, so it, it's not going to stretch out. Um, I sewed most of this though on the sewing machine with a straight stitch. Um, I think... Except for the side seams. The side seams I did on the serger, I did not do the hole you know, by leaving a spot in the side seam per the recommendation. I always like to do a big buttonhole, which is what I did here. I just interfaced behind it, did a stretchy, a knit buttonhole um, as big as I could make, and that's what I used to pass my tie through. Um, I just, I like that better. Um, anyway, it's just a really, really cute top. Uh, the kimono style sleeve. Um, where it's the grown on sleeve, I guess. It's maybe the better way to say that. Um, anyway, it's just a really fun vintage nod shirt that's just a little different for the shirt. All right, and then for the pants, this is McCall's 8007, I believe, which I bought these and um, this pattern, it's been in my stash for a little bit, I just haven't made it up yet, and I am so loving this so, so much. I love these pants so, so much. So what's great about these, you have these patch pockets, they look so 70s. Um, I only shortened the legs by an inch, which is I wanted to wear them with heels, which I have. I think they're a, li a teeny bit long even still. However, I think because this is cotton and this is my experience with denim, with any kind of heavyweight cotton, the more you wash it, the more the length shrinks up a little bit. In fact, my M5894s, I just washed again, and um, they've shrunk up a little bit to the point where I don't know that I'm going to wear my boots with them, you know? Like, I think maybe they've turned into flats, um, which makes me so angry. <laughs> like, I want them kind of long, because um, I wouldn't be able to wear heels with some of them. Or not heels. My heeled boots. It's like a chunky heel, and it's not, it's like an inch and a half. It's not like it's a huge heel. Uh, but these are a teeny weeny bit long, but I think that they will shrink up just enough where I need them to, um, and I could wear my oxblood boots, and I've got my suede boots on with them in these pictures. So I love this high-waisted. Now I did, I did not, sh um, I did not measure my rise, I should have, um, because they're about an inch, when I put them on before adding the waistband, they were hitting right at my natural waist, like right where it's supposed to, right above my belly button, um, and I'm like, oh, I don't even have the waistband on yet. So instead of, I, I basically just cut an inch and a half off of the top of the waistband and then put the, the waist on, which thankfully I had also um, cut my waistband two inches longer because I finished the inside of my jeans off differently. I did, um, just like on the sew along for the jeans that I'm doing right now, I um, cut on my, my fly pieces um, instead of sewing them on. So those are all, you know, and then tucked in all nice. And then I made a fly shield um, that's there in the back. Um, anyway, so I did deviate from the pattern. So because of that, I was worried my waistband wouldn't be long enough to extend with this fly extension. So I did lengthen the waist by two inches, which worked out well, because when I lowered everything by an inch and a half from the top, um, it made the waistband just a little bit bigger. So this work actually worked perfectly. <laughs> Now, in hindsight, I would lengthen or shorten the pattern an inch and a half at the lengthen and shorten lines, both for the front and the back, and I would be good. Um, I don't normally have to mess with the rise in pants because that's where my height is, is in my lower half from the waist down, but um, these were so high-waisted that I did have to do that. Um, I put the patch pockets on the back, and then it's got this gorgeous seaming. See the way that the 
pants do that seaming that go all the way around. Um, obviously these pants ha have, uh, you know, seams down the front and the back, which I find super flattering. It gives just another long line to make the legs look long. Um, and then this is, looks really good on the butt, I think. <laughs> Which everyone told me that when I bought that pattern, they're like, oh my gosh, that's a detail that used to see in the 70s, I think, a lot. And it does. It looks makes it makes for a really good fit on the butt. And I am crazy about it. I think it looks great. So I put the patch pockets on. They ended up a little high because I had to cut the inch and a half off the top. I actually don't think they're too high on my body. I actually kind of like where they're sitting, but they are kind of close to my waistband. So, but that's why, because I, I had to shorten things from the top. And I also really love how thick the... Um, uh, belt carriers are. I think that's a lot of fun. Um, I just, I really love these. They're so 70s and so amazingly crazy. So anyway, those are the two pieces. So now I will pop up some pictures of, with the inspiration, I'll put the inspiration post back up, and then pictures of me in it. Obviously I've deviated from the inspiration a little bit. I don't have the button detail on the front of the pants, and my wrap top is not gauzy like this one is. It's not like a chiffon see-through, um, and I'm also, I don't have a pattern. But I think that the idea is still the same. It's still a cropped wrap top, with the flared pant, and I think it, yeah, again, the nod to the 70s, I just am really, really loving right now, and the monochromatic, unexpected, oh, excuse me, spitting, <laughs> unexpected monochromatic look, I think really works as well. So, what do y'all think? Am I crazy? <laughs> I just really love both of these pieces a ton, um, especially these pants. Oh my gosh, they're just so good. Um, the pants are kind of similar to the True Bias Lander pants, honestly. Um, it's just there's a much more exaggerated flare, I think, on these uh, McCall pants. And it also has that real interesting curved detail on the butt. Um, I'm just crazy about that. I really want another pair of these and just maybe a regular denim. Or maybe another color. This Big Sur canvas is fantastic. It is pretty heavyweight material. Um... It comes in a ton of colors, but it worked really well for this pattern because it keeps everything sucked in there at your hips and waist like it's supposed to, but then it holds the, all of the support of that gigantic flare so you, it doesn't collapse on itself. It really holds its shape, which, I mean, if you're going to do a wide flare, you want it to really pop, right? So, um, yeah, this fabric was really great to use for all of that. Um, the links for the fabric I will put down below. Um, they are affiliate links, just so you know. I make a commission off of them if you do buy them from that link. Um, just want to be very transparent about that. Um, no secrets here. So there you have it, guys. There's my first uh, Sew the Look for the cold weather season for this year. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys really soon. Have a good one. Bye!